You know, many of you have a sizable investment in MTH Protosound 1 locomotives. The equalizer board is exactly physically the same size as the bottom board of the Proto 1 system. The only addition is this little top board right here, and that's the R2LC board that makes it command control. That makes this little project almost a complete plug and play installation. The first thing we want to do is remove the top board on the Proto 1 system. So we'll unplug the volume pot and the speaker, and then disconnect this right at the pin line and set that aside. Now we're going to pull the battery plug out of the bottom board. And this tender has a protocoupler connection, so we'll pull that off the bottom board. Now we need to get in here and remove this screw. But look very closely and you'll see that there's a mica insulator piece right behind this bracket. That's really critical. Don't lose that. Also, the screw has an insulating washer. Be careful to save that, too. On this tender, the front mount screw has to be accessed through the truck right here. There we go. There's the old board. There's the spacer. And let's make sure we get that mica insulator and save that when we put the new board on. Now the bottom of the Proto 1 board has four connectors for the harness. The color coding for the Proto 1 board and the color coding for the equalizer board is exactly the same. So all we do is transfer that harness color for color right over to the uh, equalizer board. Once we get this harness on the equalizer board, we need to set that aside because we've got some work to do on this tender frame. We need to drill a hole to mount a switch in the tender frame, and in order to do that, it's really a good idea to get the trucks off, and since there's only two or three other things left on, let's take them off too so that we don't damage them. Trucks have two screws in this case, one for the front, one for the rear, so we'll take that off first. Pull the protocoupler's harness out and set that aside. There's the front truck. And we've got a battery holder. And we have a speaker. Because we're converting this to command control, we need to install a program run switch. Digital Dynamics packs a slide switch like this for you to use with some leads to plug into their board. Because a slide switch requires a square hole that we have to cut into this pan, it's a lot easier if you just go to Radio Shack and get a small toggle switch like this, which only requires a quarter inch round hole to drill into that pan. Well, we've drilled the hole, we've deburred it, we've mounted the switch, and we've transferred the wires from the slide switch over to our toggle switch. When you mount the switch, pay particular attention to the top clearances, like that, as well as to the bottom clearances, because if you have a real short tender like we have, all the clearances could be a problem. This will work in the run position, and that's all that's important. If we're in a program position, we'll just have to do it on a straight track. Well, here's our tender chassis with all the hardware mounted back on. We've checked and made sure everything is clearing, so that's pretty much done. We'll set that aside, because now we need to look at mounting the antenna for the command control system. Here's the antenna that Digital Dynamics supplies with their kit. This is a foil strip with an adhesive on the back side. If you were putting this in a diesel or a plastic body locomotive, you would simply peel that strip and put it up high in the body of the diesel locomotive. But since we're putting it into a cast tender, we've got a problem. We have to get the antenna on the outside of the casting on the tender. There's a couple of ways to do that. You could either mount the antenna underneath the tender, but in our case, the tender is too short to do this. So we have to mount this onto the body of the tender to make the whole body the antenna. The instructions say 
to cut the foil off and just attach the wire to a screw somewhere inside the tender shell. But hey, we don't have a screw inside this tender shell, so we're going to have to make one little change. We're going to have to make this whole tender shell the antenna by scraping the paint off of the wall and applying that foil strip directly to the metal of the tender body. Now it's important to understand that has to be an electrical connection. So we'll do that and then we'll check it with a volt ohm meter to make sure we have an electrical connection. I'm going to use an X-Acto knife and just scrape away a large portion of the paint on the inside of this tender wall. There, it's coming off really clean. And see, we've got bare metal in there that we can attach the foil to. And let's measure the foil. Oh, it's too long, so we'll cut just a little bit off. So it'll fit within this tender's body. That'll work. Okay, let's peel the strip. And we'll apply this nice and tightly onto the tender wall. Now that looks good but we need to check to make sure that we have electrical continuity. The best way to check that is using a volt ohm meter, set it to ohms, touch the contacts. Now we know we got a needle swing, okay? Then we'll take one probe and put it on the wire in the plug and the other probe will touch to the tender body. That tells us we have an electrical contact and the tender shell is indeed our antenna. That tells us that we have continuity between the antenna plug and the body. But we have one other little problem. We have to make sure that that body does not come in contact electrically with the frame of the tender. Now Digital Dynamics says the best way to ensure that is to put a piece of tape all the way around the tender frame so that no part of the frame touches the body. In addition, they give you four plastic screws to use for body mounts. So let's get the tape on the frame and we'll go from there. All right, we've wrapped the tender's frame by first putting two pieces on the sides here and wrapping it around. And then we put pieces on the end and wrapped them around and squeezed all the corners together. Then we trimmed using a nice sharp wire cutter. We've trimmed all the tape so that even the very corners out here are completely insulated by the tape. Remember, no part of this frame can touch the body. Here is the four plastic mounting screws that Digital Dynamics packs with the equalizer board. Our two wires from the program run switch plug directly into the back of the Molex connector for the antenna. It doesn't make any difference which hole, so just plug one into one and plug the other one into the remaining hole. Let's make sure they're in good and tight. There we go. All right, now our antenna and our program run switch are ready to plug into the equalizer board. I put a drop of super glue right here where the wire touches because I want to use that as a strain relief. I don't want the wire to pull the adhesive of this antenna tape off of the body of the antenna. We've plugged in the two Molex connectors, one for the antenna and the program run switch, and this one for the protocoupler in the rear. And now we're ready to mount the board onto the chassis. Now remember that all-important mica insulator. That has to go right here to insulate between the bracket on the tender frame and the mounting point on the board. Then we'll put in our screw with the plastic washer. All right, that's nice and tight. Now we have to focus our attention on the front because we've got to get the spacer in here. And then thread the screw up from the bottom through the hole in the chassis and then up into the board. The board we took off has a nut embedded in the top of the board. The Digital Dynamics board does not have a nut embedded in the top, but they provide one for us. So we'll use that one and get it started 
onto the screw. There we go. Using a quarter inch nut driver to hold it in place, we'll tighten that in. There. Now our board is firmly mounted into place. Now let's reattach the battery plug back in its color coordinated socket here. All right. And now we're ready to replace the Proto One soundboard on the top. Make sure you line the pins up just the way they came out of the bottom board on the Proto One. They go right back in the equalizer board. Let's reattach the speaker. And we'll reattach the volume pot. There. And we're reconnected. All right, let's see if we can mount the tender shell back on top without pinching any wires anywhere. Get that one in there. Make sure the tether is not pinched and it looks all right. Don't see any wires anywhere else. Now we can install our plastic screws. Okay, let's get the first one started here. Tighten these down only until you feel a little resistance because if you go beyond that you'll break the plastic screw off. Now that we're complete, the last thing we need to do is make sure that there is no continuity between the frame of the tender and any part of the body because the body is now the antenna. Okay, see we got a needle swing that means continuity but I'm on the axle and I'm on the body and there is no continuity. That means this is a good antenna. The whole body of the tender is now the antenna. The instructions that Digital Dynamics packed with this equalizer are actually very very good. If you're used to running in command control with Lionel engines, there's a little bit of difference now that you've converted a ProtoSound 1 with the equalizer. When you turn the power on, even though this is now a command control engine, it is still in reset. So the instructions say to go engine and then the engine's number, in our case 1, then aux 1 and 0. When you press the 0, it will come out of reset. Listen. There we are. Now we're ready to run. Hit the direction button. We now have a ProtoSound 1 engine that operates in command mode.